Hi students, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about mutual inductance. So it is a continuation of the lecture that we have and the earlier lecture that we have considered that is the uh, self-inductance. Now, during that lecture, we have de uh, defined different equations for self-inductance and also considered self-inductance of a long solenoid and also a toroid coil, then a toroid coil of rectangular cross-section then a, a cylindrical capacitor, self-inductance of a cylindrical capacitor or a coaxial cable. Now, similar to uh, the lecture related to self-induction, here we are considering mutual inductance, that is basic equations related to mutual inductance. And then uh, the unit used to measure mutual inductance and some important relations related to self-inductance uh, known as uh, Newman formula for mutual inductance between two coils. And always mutual inductance, we know that um, we, we are dealing with two coils instead of one coil related to self-induction. Here we have two coil. So finally, we will consider the mutual inductance of uh, a solenoid with a secondary winding. So first, we will start with the definition of mutual inductance, then two equations for mutual inductance, one in terms of the flux linkage similar to self-inductance. The second one is in terms of the EMF induced in one coil due to the current flowing through the other coil, then the unit of self-inductance and some factors affecting the mutual inductance of a coil and the basic equation of mutual inductance connecting two coils that is called Newman formula for mutual inductance and finally the mutual inductance of a solenoid with the secondary winding. Now here in order to explain mutual inductance we have considered two coils and the coils the first coil is taken as uh, P that is the primary and the second is taken as secondary. We can take it as the first coil or second coil or the primary coil and secondary coil. And the primary coil is the coil through which uh, the current is flowing. And what happens is when a current flowing through the primary coil, it produces a magnetic field and the secondary coil is placed uh, near to the primary so that the flux produced by the primary is um, linked with the secondary coil. And we can see that the flux linked with the second coil is opposed due to Lenz's law or by Lenz's law and an EMF induces in the secondary coil. And the EMF induced in the secondary coil due to the current through the primary is characterized in terms of a constant related to or a property related to the two coils and that is called the mutual inductance between the two coils. So whenever a current flowing through a coil called primary changes, an EMF induces in a coil placed near to it, and that is called secondary, in order to oppose the change in current occurring in the primary. So here in the primary, we have a current, this is plus and minus, and let this be the direction of the current, current flowing through the primary, and that produces, produces an, uh, a magnetic field uh, around primary, and the secondary is placed in the vicinity of the primary coil so that an EMF induces and that is indicated by the voltmeter or a uh, ammeter connector in the secondary. So this property is called mutual inductance between the two coils. And uh, we can see that the mutual inductance or the EMF induced in the secondary coil is related to some factors that is the current flowing through the primary then the number of turns, sorry, the secondary, the number of turns of the secondary coil and the flux linked with the secondary coil. So actually here we have the flux is represented as phi to 1. Phi 2 is the flux, flux associated with the second coil. And we are putting a, a suffix 1 also in order to indicate that this, the reason for this phi 2 is the current flowing through the first coil. So phi 2 1 is the current or the flux linked with the second coil due to the current flowing through the first coil. Okay, so n1 and n2, n1 and n2 be the number of turns of the primary and secondary and i1 be the current flowing through the primary. Then uh, 
the flux linked with the secondary, the total flux linked is 521 into N2, N2 times 521, proportional to, and that will be proportional to the current through the primary, and the proportionality constant here is taken as M21, so that the equation changes to N2521 is equal to M21 I1 or M21, that is a mutual inductance of the second coil due to the current flowing through the first coil, M21 equals N2521 divided by I1 and that is the expression for the second uh, mutual inductance of the second coil with respect to the first coil. And the same thing is applicable if you reverse the current, that is if we allow the current to flow through the secondary that will induce an EMF in the primary, in the first coil. In the first coil, and it is represented as M12. That is mutual inductance of the first coil due to the, due to the second coil. Current flowing through the second coil is N1512. N1 is the number of turns of the primary. And 51 is the flux linked with the primary, the first coil, due to the current in the second, that is 512. N1, 512 by I2, that is the current flowing through the second coil, I2. And we can see that both M21 is equal to M12 and we will take it as simply M. So, this property shows that the mutual inductance is a constant for an arrangement, arrangement of two coils. If the coils are uh, fixed, then the mutual inductance is constant respective of whether we choose one as the primary to allow to, uh, allowing current to flow through the primary and evaluating the EMF induced in the second or allowing current to flow through the second and evaluating the EMF induced in the primary on the first coil. In the both cases we will get the same um, constant EM, uh, mutual inductance M and if we change the orientation or number of turns, etc., then the value of mutual inductance changes. Otherwise, it is a constant for a particular orientation and for a particular um, set of coils. Okay, now let us uh, obtain a relation for this um, induced EMF in terms of mutual inductance. So, let us consider the setup like this. I1 is the current flowing through the first coil and N1 is the number of turns and N2 is the, uh, that of the second one with the uh, flux linkage 521, 521. Here, the EMF induced is taken as E2, that is EMF induced in the second coil due to current I1 flowing through the primary coil. And let us start with the Faraday's law, E is equal to minus N D5 by DT. For the present setup, we can say that E2, the EMF induced in the second is N2 times minus N2 times d521 by dt. 521 is the flux linked with the second coil due to the current flowing through the first coil. So, d521 by dt and by our earlier relation we know that n2521 is equal to m21 i1. m21 mutual inductance of the second coil due to current flowing through the one or simply m i1 m i1. So, e2 is given by minus m21 di by dt or simply we are able to say it like that e is equal to m di by dt that is enough similar to that of the self inductance we have e is equal to l di by dt here it is e is equal to m di by dt uh, we can see that the other key, other thing is also correct that is if you allow current to flow through the second coil and find the emf induced in the first coil as e1 E1 is equal to M12. So the suffix, the order of suffix changes to instead of 2, 1, it is taken as 1, 2. The mutual inductance of the first coil due to current flowing through the second coil into di2 by dt. The nature of these two equations are the same, identical equations, uh, so that we can we are able to simply say it as E is equal to M di by dt. Now, let us take the measure of this mutual inductance, that is in terms of the coefficient of mutual inductance, just like that considered in the case of self-inductance. Now, start with this equation, E2 is equal to minus m di by dt. Now, the suffix is uh, not considered here, simply uh, we put it as m, m di1 by dt. E2 is the m of induced in the second coil due to the primary current, that is I1, current flowing through the first coil. And if we allowing the current, 
if we are allowing the current to change at the rate of 1 ampere per second, that is di by dt is equal to 1 ampere per second, then we are able to uh, uh, write it like this m is equal to the magnitude of the EMF induced in the second coil. The mutual inductance between the two coils is equal to the EMF induced in the second coil. The reverse thing also is correct that is uh, E1 given by E1 instead of E2, E1 given by uh, M, E1 given by simply M di2 by dt that is the EMF induced in the first coil due to current flowing through the second coil is given by M di by dt. Uh, this M is enough. So uh, the present situation if you allow di by di2 by dt as one ampere same thing so M is equal to the modulus of EMF induced in the first coil. So, uh, therefore, the mutual inductance of two coils may be defined as numerically equal to the EMF induced in one coil when the current through the other changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second. Current through the other changes at the rate. In the case of self inductance, we have considered it as the current through the coil changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second, the EMF induced in the same coil itself. But here, the current through the other coil changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second and the EMF induced in the uh, second coil is called the mutual, uh, is called the, uh, is used to define the mutual inductance. Now, the unit of mutual inductance is taken as Henry, similar to that of the self inductance. Uh, we have to start with this equation for m. m is equal to n2 phi 2 1 by i2. And uh, let us uh, put the value of i2 as 1 ampere. I2, sorry, i1 as 1 ampere. Current flowing through the primary as 1 ampere. Then n2 phi 2 1 is equal to 1 Weber. We are forcing that to 1 Weber. That is the mutual inductance m. Uh, in that case becomes 1 Henry. 1 Henry. That is m becomes 1 uh, Henry, that is I1 is 1 ampere and N2521 is 1 Weber, so M becomes 1 Henry. Uh, similarly, if we start with the other equation, that is opposite form M is equal to N1512 by I, I2, here also allowing I1 to 1 ampere and the magnetic field linked to 1 Weber, again we get the same result M as 1 Henry, so that we can say like this. Two coils are said to have a new mutual inductance of 1 Henry if a current of 1 ampere flowing through one coil produces the flux linkage of 1 Weber in the other coil. A current of 1 ampere flowing through one produces the flux of 1 Weber in the other, then it is called 1 Henry. Then the unit of mutual inductance may be represented in terms of the other equations also. E2 is equal to minus m di2 by dt and here di by dt is taken as 1 ampere per second then e2 is equal to uh, put as 1 volt then m is equal to 1 henry 1 henry so the same thing may be represented using the other equation that is for equation for e1 also again letting the current change as 1 ampere per second and assuming the emf induced is 1 volt then again we have m is equal to 1 henry so the definition is the coils are said to have mutual inductance of 1 Henry when current changing at the rate of 1 ampere per second in one coil induces an EMF of 1 volt in the other coil. Current uh, changing at the rate of 1 ampere per second in one coil induces an EMF of 1 volt in the other coil. Then let us consider some factors affecting the mutual inductance of two coils. So these are characterized as uh, the geometry of the coil. It's the first thing is the geometry of the coil and the factors are the size, size of the coil, shape of the coil, number of turns of the coil and nature of the material of the coil, uh, material of the core, core on which the uh, coil is wound. So uh, the nature, the material changes means the uh, value of mu changes then the number of turns increases the flux linkage and the shape changes the area shape and size changes the area so all these things affects the uh, mutual inductance so the geometry is one important parameter then another thing is the distance between two coils distance between these two coils means the flux linkage changes the flux linked with the one coil due to the current or the flux produced by the other 
if we change the distance of increase the distance the uh, the fraction of the flux linkage changes and also orientation this also changes the flux linkage so if the coils are placed very near to each other so that the entire flux produced by the flux first coil is uh, linked with the second coil then we can see that there is maximum flux linkage so the mutual inductance in that case becomes maximum on the other hand suppose we move the coil away from the first one or change the orientation of the coil the um, produced flux is not completely uh, linked to the secondary coil so that the mutual inductance reduces so we can uh, define another term in this regard that is the coupling factor if maximum linkage is there then maximum coupling is there so if there is no linkage so the flux second coil is far away then the flux produced by the first coil the second coil is not in the field of the first coil so the coupling is zero now very important relation uh, related to mutual inductance that is called the newman formula and we are going to derive this newman formula and the method used to define newman formula is based on um, biot savart law so biot savart law we know that the magnetic field associated with a current ca uh, carrying conductor so initially we will consider a small element of the current carrying conductor and the magnetic flux link is taken as db and db is equal to the constant mu zero by 4 pi into uh, dl cross r divided by r square so that is biot savart law in order to get the total magnetic field we'll take the integral equation that it is line integral of dl cross r divided by r square that constant into mu zero by 4 pi into line integral dl cross r by r square so this is the expression biot savart law now here we are considering two coils and the uh, current flowing through the first coil is analyzed in terms of a current element so a current i1 flowing through a small elemental length dl1 is considered and the magnetic field produced by the entire current flowing through the first loop is taken and we are assuming another coil placed in this field and we will identify what is the force acting on a small element dl2 that is an elemental length dl2 of the second coil then in terms of these poles of interaction we will we will ex, uh, identify or derive an expression for mutual inductance between these two coils okay so the two coils considered here are shown here the first coil in blue color and the second in green color and uh, um, let us take a small current element dl1 tl1 and current i1 is flowing through the coil uh, in the counterclockwise direction and we take s1 s1 as the area area of the coil the primary coil through which the current i1 is flowing and phi2 here phi2 is the flux produced uh, linked with the second coil phi2 is the flux linked with the second coil of area s2 s2 is the area of the second coil and phi2 is the flux produced by the first coil uh, around or in the vicinity of the second coil phi 2 and we are taking a small element dl2 dl2 and the current induced in is taken as i2 current induced in the second one is taken as i2 okay so first let us take the expression from biot savart law the expression for b the flux produced due to the current flowing through the primary that is the flux density b1 due to the first coil b1 is equal to mu0 by 4 pi into i mu0 uh, i1 by 4 pi mu0 i dl cross r by r square that expression the line integral dl cross r by r square gives the total total flux linked total flux uh, sorry total flux produced b1 is equal to mu0 i1 by 4 pi or mu0 by 4 pi into i dl cross r by r square and phi2 that is the total flux linked with the, the second coil phi2 is given by s2 integral b1 dot ds2 s2 integral s2 means the surface area of the second coil and b1 is the flux produced by the first coil where the second coil is placed so b1 dot ds2 that is the total flux phi2 
or by taking the equation that is uh, b is equal to del cross a we are converting it into the vector uh, form that is b is equal to del cross a so b1 is equal to del cross a1 the vector potential so del cross a1 dot ds2 now using stokes theorem this del cross a uh, sorry del cross a dot ds surface integral del cross a dot ds is converted into a line integral line integral um, related to s2 so that is line integral passing through the boundary of s2 that is closed line integral a1 dot dl2 del cross a dot ds2 is equal to line integral a dot dl2 this is stokes theorem for converting surface integral line integral so we have converted that or represented the flux in terms of the um, vector potential now the expression for a is given by a is given by a1 is given by mu0 by 4 pi i1 line integral dl1 by r dl by r so this we have studied this expression uh, in magnetostatics that is actually this is a solution of Poisson's equation. In electrostatics, we have this equation, similar equation. See, um, by making use of the expression, uh, say, E is equal to minus del V, E is equal to, say, minus del V in expression for uh, del dot E is equal to uh, rho by epsilon zero. Rho by epsilon zero, uh, we get del square, v is equal to minus rho by epsilon zero this is poisson's equation poisson's equation and the solution is given as v is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon zero uh, epsilon zero uh, rho rho dv rho dv divided by r ah, this is the solution oleum integral so 1 by 4 pi epsilon zero oleum integral rho dv by r ah. so similarly uh, we have in the case of magnetostatics also we have the, uh, the equation del square a is equal to minus mu zero j this is poisson's equation del square a is equal to minus mu zero j and the solution of this equation is given by a is equal to uh, mu zero by four pi mu zero by four pi into uh, oleum integral j dv divided by r only integral j dv divided by r so this is the expression for uh, the solution for this equation and this that gives the vector potential this is for oleum current j and for a uh, line current it is taken as i dl by r instead of j dv we have i dl by r uh, that is in this expression so this is given by this expression mu zero by four pi line integral i1 dl1 by r or i1 is constant so we are taking our i1 outside so mu 0 by 4 pi i1 into line integral dl1 by r now substituting that equation in the expression for phi 2 that is phi 2 is given by uh, l2 integral a1 dot dl2 a1 dot dl2 and this a1 is given by this expression and substituting a1 in this expression that is here a1 is substituted that is in black color mu 0 4 pi divided by a1 is here then line integral dl1 by r is here like l1 integral dl1 by r1 is here and l2 integral dl2 that is coming from this uh, this part l2 integral dl2 and uh, simplifying and equating equating with the, the required relation n2 phi 2 n2 phi 2 is given by m21 i1 that is a mutual induction relation so that m2 or m is given by n2 phi 2 divided by i1 and for the present situation we have only one coil so we will simply take it as phi phi 2 phi 2 is the total flux so phi 2 divided by i1 m is equal to phi 2 by i1 and dividing this expression the, the expression for phi 2 by i1 so cancelling this i1 from this relation so the final expression for m21 also called m is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi l2 integral l1 integral dl1 dot dl2 dl1 dot dl2 divided by r and this is called newman formula that is m is given by mu 0 by 4 pi 
double integral L1 L2 over L1 L2 dL1 dot dL2 divided by R. So this equation is of very much importance in dealing with the different um, problems related to mutual inductions. So uh, while derive this expression we have included the vector potential and as a solution of the Poisson's equations we have substituted for the vector potential and finally arrived at a very simple and useful form. And as the final um, part of this lecture, I would like to discuss about the mutual inductance of a solenoid with the secondary winding in order to uh, clearly, uh, in order to get the position of the one coil clearly visible, uh, a small portion of the first coil is removed uh, from this figure, in this figure. And uh, let us uh, consider some basic situation, initial situation that is n1 is the number of turns, n1, n1 is the number of turns of the first uh, primary coil and a1 is the area of cross section, n1 is the number of turns, a1 is the area of cross section, n2 is the number of turns and a2 is the area of cross section. Then let i be the current flowing through, this is taken as the uh, first uh, the coil i is current uh, flowing through n2 n2 is the outer coil outer coil or the long coil and i is allowed to flow through that coil so n1 and n2 number of turns per unit length of short and long solenoid flux density inside inside is equal to v0 mu0 n2 i v is equal to mu0 n2 i that is flux produced by the long solenoid is given by mu0 n2i. So n2 is the number of turns of the long solenoid. So flux produced is equal to mu0 n2i. And the flux through the single turn, single turn of the short solenoid is v is equal to mu0 n2i into a1. Flux through a single turn is equal to mu0 n2i into a1 because that is through the entire area entire area so the flux inside the solenoid is taken then multiply with the area of a single turn use the flux linked with a single turn so the total flux linked with the short solenoid is given by uh, mu0 ni into a1 into total number of turns of the small solenoid that is n1 l n1 l turns are there n1 is the number per unit length, n1 into l is the number total number of the small solenoids. So a1 n1 l. So mu0 n2 i a1 l1 n1 l is the total flux and is given by mu0 mu0 n1 n2 i a1 l. So this is the total flux linked with the linked with the uh, small solenoids. Now uh, we have the basic equation for phi in, uh, in terms of m. So phi is equal to mi. So m is equal to phi by i. So removing i from this relation, i from this relation, we will get m as mutual inductance as mu0 n1 n2 a1 l. So mu0 n1 n2 a1 l. So this is the expression for mutual inductance of a solenoid with a secondary winding. And in the case of um, self-inductance we have derived a similar relation in that case we get mu0 n square al mu0 n square al instead here we have mu0 n1 n2 al so that is the slight difference only is there the mutual inductance and the self-inductance in the case of a solenoid and while uh, considering the uh, secondary winding coil, we have considered the current flowing through a long solenoid and assumed that uh, the flux inside is constant. We know that the flux inside is constant, so very easy to find out the uh, mutual inductance between the two coils. The same thing is applicable if we consider the small coil as primary and uh, the long sol solenoid as secondary. In that case also the equation is same. So, some, somebody asks you to find the mutual inductance of a coil uh, by allowing a current to flow through the inner coil and find the mutual inductance. In that case, no need to uh, take it that way uh, in as such because uh, both are same. So simply consider 
uh, what we have taken that is take the current through the outer one so it is very easy to find the flux linkage otherwise it is difficult if you take the primary as the, the small coil then it will be uh, difficult okay anyway that is of much useful while you uh, while we do different problems related to uh, mutual inductance in uh, different types of solenoids so in this lecture uh, similar to self inductance we have derived what is mutual in, or defined what is mutual inductance and uh, um, obtained expressions for mutual inductance simple expressions in terms of flux linkage and in terms of emf induced then derived uh, considered the factors affecting the mutual inductance then uh, derived newman formula very important formula in terms of uh, current carrying elements of the coil two coils then finally the mutual inductance of a long solenoid with the secondary winding okay that's all for this lecture thank you